Welcome, welcome to another episode of the River Run Podcast. I'm your host, Adam Frost, and I welcome you to another episode. Man, I am excited for this one. I've been excited for all of them, but like this one's kind of, uh, this one's cool because at the same time, um, my guest tonight, um, he's like the OG, as they call him down on the Paddle and Finn Network. Uh, that's probably a dead giveaway that, it, you know, my guess is uh, Brian Schiller. But I was going to say, uh, before we get into bringing on my guest, um, did anybody by chance see the Jeff Little video that he put out about the Shranko rig? Um, I watched it last night. Um, if you're not doing this for your baits, especially your flukes, if you guys like fishing flukes, I love fishing flukes. Um, I've always done like, you know, a textile pose to it. And I'll be honest with you. I have generally in the past, I've done a minnow style bait paddle tail. And I've, I've done the kind of hooked it through the nose. Watch this video that Jeff does. And with uh, Josh Franco from, from the Achigan. Um, yeah, just check it out. And if you fish, uh, I'd be honest with you. I think it'd work large, small, small, whatever. But it's such a simple rig, and it catches fish. So yeah, no, check it out. I was super pumped because I'm like all for the flukes. I love fishing flukes, especially for some river smallies. Um, I have the my, my I have my certain flukes that I like, but at the same time, I think any fluke would uh, would definitely work on the Shranko rig. So shout out to you, Josh, and your. Uh, awesome rig there and jeff little for the uh, awesome video um yeah so you know we're, we're we're sitting in the house again you know episode uh eight we are here this has been cool um don't forget uh dubro fishing uh dubro fishing offers uh save 10 at checkout that's right 10 percent off your next purchase at dubro fishing uh, you know, the promo code, I have it linked down in the su subscription, but at the same time in the description, you can listen to it now, which is run R R U 10. That is R R U N 10 save 10 at your neck on your next duo purchase. Um, also want to give a big shout out to the folks at Jackson kayaks, you know, for supporting the river, the river run podcast. Also, um, the, my boys over on the Hard Knocks and all the boys and all the girls out there who are crushing it on that uh, July month long for Kayak Bass Canada. There are some absolute hogs, man, being hung up on that leaderboard. It is super cool to see. So don't forget, while you're out there, have fun. Make sure you always wear your PFD on the water. And same time. Make sure you guys read the rules 110%. Read the rules before you so you understand them so you don't ever run into an issue where you catch that big fish, you know, and it, ah, it's DQ'd because of something silly. Take a moment, check your photos, always check your photos. Hands down, always double check your photo before you release that fish back. You can put the fish back in the net, but don't snap the photo, do this, because if your photo is blurry, the identifier is blurry or whatnot, or you, you actually just got a black photo, ah, it's the worst. Anyways, that's just a little river run tip for you, okay? So um, without further ado, uh, let's get into this, because I'm excited for my guests, because uh, Brian Schiller is the OG of Paddle and Finn. Um, I'm grateful to be a part of Paddle and Finn hugely. And um, at the same time, he is uh, the generous Dubro fishing manager that helped out the River Run podcast. Uh, and also, you know, he's got his own show, uh, Friday Night Bites. Uh, check him out every Friday. I think it's eight o'clock um, on the Paddle and Fin Network. Lots of other shows, lots to listen to. Check it out. So without further ado, I'd like to bring on my guest, Mr. Brian Shipp. What's hey, up, man. buddy? What's going on, dude? I'm that good, man. A lot. I was, I was going to say, make sure you have the right identifier code on there, too. That's uh, a really good point, too. We had a recent tournament uh, in Wisconsin here, and uh, the guy that would have won had the wrong identifier code on his on his uh, identifier, and all his fish got DQ'd. 
Oh no, dude, that uh, that's got to be the uh, that's got to be I, hard to. I to think listen he had to. like yeah, I think he had like ninety six or ninety eight inches. Oh, dude, Ooh. yeah, <laughs> that's um. Hey, that's you a know, bad day. <laughs> that's a bad day. I, uh, I've, I, I've done that. I've actually gotten really, you know, I get really pumped when you catch a fish, right? And then you get, you get it on the board, and yeah. So I, I got it, I got it down. I'm like, yes, okay, cool. I snap that picture. I'm like, oh, sweet, snap another picture of that fish. And what do I do? Yeah. Back in the water. I'm like, oh, cool. Well, I can tell you this: the f- first photo of that fish. Um, yeah, it's uh, blurry. You you can't really see anything. Um, I don't. E- it almost looked like I'm. It the fish didn't move. It's like I moved trying to get my wet finger to take that photo. Yeah. And what ends up happening is, oh yeah, the second photo of me holding the fish, it was awesome. That <laughs> other one, uh, it wouldn't have mattered. Um, that was a eighteen and three quarter. Uh, largy that i had caught uh down by the cottage and uh yeah no um i tried really hard to catch him again but uh yeah so <laughs> um but yeah before we get all into this like i you know i i honestly think you know for the folks that i'm sure there's everybody has to know yet but for the folks that are new listeners or new to the sport um i'll let you take the stage my friend all right uh yeah so i we started paddling fin in 2018 um it was just more of like a a way to keep a diary of our venture into kayak fishing right like all throughout my youth i you know fish from the bank fish from a boat with my dad uh fished out of a canoe for a while um came back into fishing, uh, after, you know, somewhere in my mid twenties and, uh, started fishing out of boats again and stuff like that. And, you know, kayak was something that, uh, could get me on the water more often and in waters that normally weren't accessible by a boat. So, uh, me and a good friend of mine, um, Scott Olson, uh, both, kind of jumped into kayaks about the same time we were both big fans of podcasts and uh it was just like a random happenstance where we were like oh we should start a podcast about kayak fishing and then we started looking into it and there wasn't really any podcasts about it and um at that time we were doing a ton of research on like kayak fishing in general and there was a little bit out there there wasn't a ton Um, so we were like, well, screw it. Like, let's sit down and, you know, talk about our trips out on the water. And, uh, I forget whose podcast I was on recently. And we were discussing this and like, I remember the first time we got like 50 downloads on an episode and we were like, you know, people are listening. That's crazy. Now it's like, you know, you get a thousand downloads and, you know, an hour and you're like, okay, you know, whatever. (laughs) <laughs> so it's uh it, it's kind of wild right but um yeah no, it's that been is. a wild ride but uh yeah man i mean i've been in uh you know i work with my local kayak shop still to this day i i do some stuff for them uh rock town adventures in northern illinois and then uh you know they've always been a huge supporter of me and the podcast so you know with with having a partnership with them like it's allowed me to be in many different types of boats um at one point i was on the jackson kayak team um i saw that liska in the beginning and i i kind of was reminiscing on some old times because Um, that was my that was my river rig right like that's that's my rig that that is definitely my boat man like dude uh, dude, you can't beat a you can't beat a liska in moving water oh it's to be honest with you i have the uh i have the bite fd and don't get me wrong i'm i love it it's a great little go-kart to zip around yeah yeah but yeah, yeah me paddling my lizka mm-hmm. you know skinny water yeah. dragging it you know yeah. um wade fishing you know the same yeah. it, man it just it has a it has my it has my heart like it is by yeah. far it's my first jackson and it's like it's like the it's like i i married that jackson i feel like it is a yeah. fantastic <laughs> boat man 
Like, I know it probably sounds a little weird. Like, wow, he's no, 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 he's no. really into his Liska. You no, know, no, like, no. Uh, <laughs> I I know somebody that's more into their Liska. I think oh. I think my good friend Jay Randall, who used to be my co-host on the OG show, like, okay, yeah, yeah. I think I think he's going to be buried in his Liska, honestly. And I think he oh. bought that damn thing back in like. 2017 or something 2016 like it's an old boat man it's it's seen some water for sure oh um, dude i mean he's still using it to this day down in tennessee and um it's just a great little rig but yeah man i mean i've i've uh been in many different boats many different setups uh i'm i'm currently uh on the new canoe national fishing team. Um, yeah. I've, I've been working with new canoe for Jesus, uh, since like 2019, 2020, somewhere in there. You have um, the Flint. Um, I used to float out of the Flint quite a bit, but I'm primarily in the unlimited right now. Um, cool. Very it's cool. just a, I, I fish a lot of big water. Um, I like running a motor. I, I still floated in a Creek. Uh, it does just as good. It doesn't do as good as a Flint, but, um, it does just as good. But I mean, I'm a big, awesome. tall, fat guy. So, uh, <laughs> I can, I well, can run the Flint. I could run the Flint down a river. No problem. Be um, comfortable on the fun. water, you know? Yeah. There's a boat yeah, yeah, out there yeah. for everybody. You know, that's the way exactly. I look at it. Um, I always say there's no such thing as a perfect kayak. There's a perfect kayak for a perfect person for a perfect situation, my friend. Dude, I, I, I say that all the time. Like I, I get it all. I do get asked a lot like, Oh, like, you know, what's, what's the best kayak out there? You know? Yeah. And they're like, they're kind of surprised. Like, well, why, why don't you say Jackson? Why? Like, why don't yeah. you just put me in, in a chat? Well, do you know what? To be honest with you, there's a lot of great boats out there. Everyone has its unique little quirks and whatnot, but it's yeah. about finding the boat that you're happy with because at the end yeah. of the day, you're the one who's going to go out there and paddle it. And I paddled many boats and, you know, and for sure, like there's, there's, there's some fantastic brands out there. Um, some that just are not for me, but you know, when I got into my Jackson, my Lizka, uh, I got it off a buddy of mine and I'll be honest, I was like, I was straight up like, this is, the most incredible experience on the water and it wasn't until oh god like last summer that i actually got another jackson because i was just like well the risk i like it it just does everything yeah. for me like you know yeah. what i mean like it, it covers all my bases and but you know at the same time i was like ah, oh, i was new on the on the jackson team and i you know was like you know what i really like the the bite you know i was like oh, i'll try that more open concept whatnot a little something different from the liska and a pedal drive anyway sure you can get down into it still the liska number one on the <laughs> on this guy's on this guy's show but i was yeah. gonna say though um like yeah like that's pretty neat like when you talk about paddle and fin i'll be honest with you uh i he, I'm a podcast guy. Always been into podcasts. A um, couple of years, uh, you know. I, I think, I think I, I've noticed I have this thing called Apple Apple Podcast on my yeah. on my phone, and I was like, oh, that's cool. I'll, and I've listened to fishing, and I was getting more and more into kayak fishing, and I was like, oh, paddle and fin, like that's kind of cool. Like it was like the name, you know, like a paddle and a fin. Like I was like, this yeah. this might be up my alley. So I started listening. And I started getting more and more into it. And, you know, I got to say, like, you guys, the crew at Paddle and Thin, like, you guys really put together a very unique set of um, hosts and yeah. a great set of content that, like, in, in my honest opinion, really covers all the bases. So if you were, like, just that avid outdoor person, like, there's something there for you, whether, you know, you fish kayaks, you're doing hunting, you know, or you're into gear, you know. There's a yeah. lot of, you know, it, you know, and like, and Hey, if you're a saltwater guy down in Texas, like, you know, for, for instance, like yeah. Dustin, you know, you, you got something there, you know, you got your rap and uh, John rap in um, West Virginia, you know, and like you guys really covered, you know, Matt Gibson and like, you guys really covered it. So like, I was always like, uh, I'll be honest. I was a big, I was always a big fan of, of listening to, uh, paddle and fin and all the shows you know and i you know it's cool when you when you listen to something you know 
way back when and you look at it now and you're you know you're you went from the listener to being somebody sitting in the chair you know and yeah. sitting down <laughs> with the og you know i didn't think that was kind of as you know that was possible but uh, no, no man I, uh, i'll chat with anybody man um yeah that's one of those kind of concepts like i i'd love to say it was like a hundred percent my idea but uh, i'll give credit where credit's due it was uh you know when um Jay took over for my buddy Scott um, because Jay was like like our third or fourth guest ever on Paddle and Finn and uh, he and I kind of hit it off right and you know we had fished a bunch together stuff like that and uh, we um, when he came on board you know we started discussing like how do we make this thing better you know like how do we continue to grow it and you know, Jay was like, dude, we should make some kind of like collective. Right. And, I, and that's where like, I was like, okay, I'm listening. And, uh, and then the ideas started stemming from there. And, you know, we just reached out to like people we knew or interacted with on like Facebook, Instagram, stuff like that. And was like, Hey, you know, like we're doing this thing. We see you guys are kayak fishing. You know, we want to kind of have this like diverse network. So there's something for everybody, you know? Yeah. And, oh, and it's, and it's funny because we had always talked about, um, I forget who it was. I want to say it was Jimmy Skinner when he was doing the reel down had one of the kayak clubs in Canada on and he was like, dude, these guys like showed out, man. Like I forget how, uh, like he was like, there was like 90 anglers at an event up in Ontario. And I was like, well, yeah, dude, like you come out of the womb in Canada. Like you basically come out with a fishing pole or a hunting rifle, right? Like, (laughs) you know, like, I mean, I know that's like a bad analogy, but like, dude, I love Canada. If I, I always say like in my previous lives, I probably lived in Canada at one point because I love it so much, but well, you're just going to have to get up here. Then that's the thing. You got to come up, you know? Hey, the problem is, is like, I'll come up, but I may not leave. I'll sleep on your couch for months, Adam. But you know, you know what? Um, (laughs) We will, as Canadians, we, we take care, you know, of our guests. So we'll make sure to take care of you. Uh, That's not a problem. Uh, You are, you are welcome anytime, uh, you know, up at my place. I'm in Ontario. So right. Right. um, right. Yeah, dude. But, but but I, I mean, after that show, I was like, dude, we should try to find somebody up in Canada to do a podcast. Cause like, I know there's a, a a huge network of kayak fishermen up there, like uh, we, friends we, with uh, Jay Brown, you know, like Jay well, Brown, Jay, you know? yeah, big shout out to Jay, <laughs> but uh, downtown yeah, Jay Brown, but uh, you know, it was one of those things. And then uh, when uh, you had reached out and you were like, "Hey, man, like, you know, I think it was Dustin had mentioned it first, and yeah, uh, and." Uh, we were like, yeah, man, it only makes sense. So I'm glad you're on the team, man, and and pumping out content. It's all been great. Um, so yeah, welcome, welcome to the familia, my man. Uh, I, I appreciate <laughs> that, man. I definitely appreciate it, and I, you know, I do appreciate all, all the 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 paddle and thin uh, hosts, and yeah, you know, it, and it's cool yeah. because you know, like that's what I want to do is I want to shine Canada to all our listeners, you know worldwide and at the same time i want canada to see all the fantastic you know all our friends you know on the other side yeah. of the border too yeah. right so yeah. i think i think this is this is super cool so with you know you you've come back with this new show and mm-hmm. that's friday night bites so like yeah that's kind of it's cool you know like it's it's you know i like it it's just it's kind of like friday night lights you know what i mean like you yeah, just yeah. You, you jump yeah. on you know you do you, you do your thing you know and man it, it's been good I, i've liked uh i've really liked that especially the saint lawrence uh, episode i thought that was uh, that was cool yeah that was yeah super we, went, cool, dude. we went a little longer on that one just because it's like you get me and matt together in a room and we won't shut up but um yeah man it was it was a concept like i had been thinking about doing for a while like just like real short form like you know i usually like keep it around like a half hour 45 minutes you know there are a couple episodes actually the two episodes that went long matt was on both of them 
but um we you know i it it's more of like i've always said like since we started paddling finn like uh i'm gonna share all my mistakes all my good things my bad things everything in between because i want people to learn from my mistakes so they don't have to make them i'll make them for you right so yeah there's a lot of that that goes Teaching. on plus i yeah and You're and i that. yeah and i i touch on like some current events sometimes things like that like the the other one i did with matt we were talking about forward facing sonar and it wasn't yeah, that, that was we like episode. necessarily took opinions on we're for it or against it. It was like, we just talked about the pros and cons on both sides of the fence and left it to whomever was listening to, you know, make their own judgment and things like that. Just because yeah. it's been like a hot topic. Right. But um, yeah, no, man, I'm, I'm just having fun with it. Um, you know, I like the shaky head episode. I really did. Shaky head. Oh, that was cool. Yeah, 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 that yeah. was cool. Yeah. Cause I, when I got into fishing, one of the, like, I love finesse, but one of the mm -hmm. things I always threw was a gambler, I forget, it's gambler lures worm that they had. Okay. Um, it was like their finesse worm. Anyways, I, know I what would you're throw talking it on. About, yeah. yeah, I would throw it on shaky head. And yeah. I, between that, tubes, like, those were yeah. like the two things that I really focused on, and obviously, wacky rigs, but. Sure. Um, the shaky head and I like I just liked how you really touched on you know how you, you brought in the concept too that you know it's not just for spinning like you can throw a big shit you can throw a shaky head you know on yeah uh, casting and you know just talking about line reel technique stuff I, I man I'm a huge fan of that like yeah, yeah, um, yeah. and I even uh, I even picked up some P line eight pound um, the floral, floral yeah the floral clear yeah. just to try it out like i i've never yeah. i've never done done just straight uh so i i have yeah in the past with one other but yeah no so i thought that was cool that was definitely a neat episode to sit down and like obviously forward facing sonar is such a topic uh in the industry <laughs> these days right. that you know it's hard not to talk about it you know it's right it, it's right there um, and then, you know, obviously your, your big uh, trip up to the St. Lawrence river in upstate New York. Uh, yeah. you know, that, that's pretty cool. Uh, that it was, a... it was, it was funny. We were fishing out of a boat. So, uh, at one point we were heading towards Lake Ontario. We were going to yeah. go to the lake and fish right around the mouth there. Nice. And I looked down at the graph and I'm like, I looked over at Matt and I was like, Hey, you want to go to Canada? And he was like, yeah, why not? So I went like this and I was like, welcome to Canada. I was like, you want to go to the U S he was like, sure. Why not? So I just, <laughs> I was like, welcome back to the United States. So what a, what a unique fishery though, man. Yeah, um, man. The St. Lawrence is dude, like, Oh, what a blast. And I mean, we, we caught a ton of fish, healthy fish yeah. too, man. Like those smallies just got shoulders on them. Yeah, and dude. I know uh, some of the other guys up there got into a slew a decent largemouth as well. And oh yeah, for sure. But uh, man, it, it was so beautiful, and I only small saw a small fraction of it, you know, because um, I did go north the one day, and we were we were fishing up by uh, what's the big bridge up there? That um, Thousand Islands uh, bridge. I think that's it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. We launched right there. I think it's Grass Lake State Park or Grass. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. And uh, we fished around uh, a bunch up there and around a couple of the bigger islands. And uh, uh, I ended up hooking into what the hell was that thing? I know I texted it to you. I think it was like five three or five four or five. Yeah, eight. I, I, don't I, know. I remember. It was yeah, over I five it. pounds. That's all I remember. But That's I caught it on a. I, yeah i caught it on a jerk bait and i've yeah. never been a huge jerk bait fisherman me either and, man uh, me either but that day i figured it out so like now i'm like yeah. i want to go fish a jerk bait you know <laughs> and sometimes you don't think like everybody assumes like the jerk bait's like really cold water you know what i mean right and you know i was with uh, a buddy last year and he was throwing a jerk bait and i was kind of i i'll be honest i was like oh i don't know if i'd really throw a jerk bait right now but then yeah. he's like all of a sudden he's, he's catching fish only on a jerk bait and i was like well yeah. you know it's it is what it is but uh no that that's uh that is super cool um so when the next time you come up you gotta let me know um i will uh i would i would definitely join you guys out there 
on the St. Yeah, Lawrence sure. River. And you gotta do awesome. a, you gotta do a kayak experience. Like that's catching like St. Lawrence River smallmouth in a kayak. Like Dude, is, I, can, oh. I can, yeah, I can only imagine just uh, rods bent, you know, fish bombing <laughs> out of water, like you know, and they're just they <laughs> hit man, and they're just like, Yeah, you're yeah. not keeping me on this. And can yeah. they have so much more? Like, there's just Dude. so much more for them to run at, and yeah, they figure it out real quick. And it's funny because they'll literally bomb themselves right at the kayak, and they're oh, just yeah, trying yeah. to punch that bait yeah. out of their mouth. It's yeah. like but yeah, no, it's uh, they they are definitely a special breed uh, of uh, of smallmouth. Uh, those St. Lawrence ones. So you know, at the same time, uh, you work with Dubro Fishing. That is that's that's what you do. Yeah, yeah, that's my uh, main employer. Um, I started here, I don't know, about two years ago. Um, Sweet. You know, I come from the construction world, right? And uh, yeah you know, as fishermen, we always dream about working in the fishing industry and, mm -hmm. uh, yes, we do believe it, believe it or not. I was at ICAST one year talking, doing a podcast, uh, talking with one of the companies I work with. And, um, you know, I, I heard, uh, this person, you know, over say like, you know, I'm buried in work. I need to hire another person, this and that. And like the whole way home, I, just thought about it nonstop. And I was like, you know what? Like, I'm going to shoot that person a message, shot him an email. And uh, I was like, hey, like, I don't know if you're serious or if like this is even a possibility. Um, but like, if you were ever to hire anybody, like, I'd love to send you my resume. Granted, like, I'm not in the, I don't come from the fishing industry, but like, yeah, yeah. I have a lot of experience doing fishing related stuff, uh, especially on the marketing end of things and stuff like that. And, uh, um, you know, they responded back. They were like, you know, if it was my choice, I'd hire you in a heartbeat. Um, but you know, let me, let me see how it plays out, whatever. And, uh, I never really heard anything back. And, uh, I was like, yeah, whatever, you know, like it was worth a shot. Right. And, yeah, yeah. uh, so then, uh, I don't know, fast forward a few months later, like I get an email saying, Hey, like, I know like this didn't happen working for us, but I, I have some friends that are in your backyard that are, are looking for somebody. I think you'd be a perfect fit. Like here's their contact, like reach out and, you know, just tell them I sent you and, uh, hopefully it works out. Right. And, uh, I went through that whole interview process and all that stuff. And, uh, you know, I've basically got my winning lottery ticket and, uh, got my job here and right on. Uh, it's, uh, it's been Thank awesome, you. man. Like, uh, originally I got hired on for, um, just doing marketing and stuff, but, uh, you know, now I'm like head of marketing, head of sales. And, uh, I do, a lot of our R and D prototyping testing. Very. I run our pro staff, like all I do a whole slew of things. I could keep yeah, going man. on. You're a busy but, guy. Yeah. But you're uh, busy guy. But uh yeah, man, it's it's been great, man. And it it's funny because we were talking before before the show started, and it's like yeah, dude. Um Dubro, you know, it's like when I when I first would, you know got the opportunity to apply here or whatever i was like who the hell is dubro fishing you know what i mean yeah and, and it's funny like we've had that talk and it's been a running joke in the company here for years like dubro is one of the best kept secrets in the fishing industry however we're working on rapidly changing that but um <laughs> going the other I mean, way with it now yeah i mean dubro fishing has been around since uh 1982 um, and just like a brief background on us, we actually, as a company, started in 1958 in the uh, remote control airplane world. Um, the original founder, Dewey Broberg, um, hence the name Dubro, comes yeah. from Dewey Broberg. Um, he, uh, he had invented a, a thing for starting your remote control airplane engine and like put an ad in a magazine kind of blew up from there. Um, and it's just rapidly grown from there. 
Um, obviously, one of his hobbies was fishing. So in 1982, um, they had some product ideas and launched Dubro Fishing. And then later on, um, you know, in 1997, we launched Pine Ridge Archery as well. So, um, oh, you wow. know, it's, it, yeah. it's three, yeah. three divisions all under one roof. Um, wow. and, and all three brands are distributed worldwide. So um, it's it's kind of a bigger operation than you would know. Um, but um, yeah, it, it, we got a really unique and interesting background right yeah no that's that's really cool and it, it's neat too that like it all started with you know the parts for remote controlled you know yeah plane you know yeah that that right there you, you can say like wow like you know it's 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 actually growing so much and it's oh, yeah. and it's gone into like you know like even though it's it's a hobby it, it yeah. fishing's a hobby too it's just gone right. it's just grown a different kind of way yep. to attract you know the yeah. you know your avid outdoors uh men and women because obviously yeah. you know having archery you know you got uh Dubro products and then you got uh dewey uh baits yeah. which yeah. you know um no that's uh that and uh, like wow like 1959 uh, i think you said uh um, 1958 yeah. yeah um like wow like yeah. you wouldn't I would, and it's funny because i'd actually gone like so when i found out about dubro i mm -hmm. had found out from uh brad hicks brad hicks yeah. had posted a video about this rod um holder and i was like yeah, yeah the yeah and i was like oh this is cool and i said you know what like i'm always like we spend all this time you know we got rods and we got reels and you know and we got tackle and, you know, we take so much time to put our tackle all so perfectly, like, you know, individual yeah. little boxes, like keep yep. it in you know, there. But then you're like, you take your rods and you shove them in the corner and you're like, <laughs> yeah. And, you, and, and your rods and the, are probably worth more than, you, than the baits yeah. you're throwing. And the rods yeah. are what are keeping yeah. the connection of you being able to reel and hook this fish. <laughs> right. but you take right. them and you jam them in the corner. Yeah. It's like, right. I don't right. get this. Like, yeah. And I was like, you know what, Adam, you got to stop this. Like we're putting an end to this. Stop putting those rods. And I, and this is what happened. Adam put them in the corner and then like, you know, Oh, I'm like, Oh yeah, I got this one here. I go grab it. And then it's just like an explosion of a Christmas tree. They're all yeah. coming down now. And I'm like, Oh, <laughs> come on. Anyways. So then I said, you know what? I'm going to try this. And yeah. so I ended up ordering it and I think I ordered it like, um, Oh my God, like over a year ago. Yeah. And, um, so I get it in and I'm like, Oh, that's cool. So I put it all together and I, I hung it in the ceiling in my basement because that's where yeah. I kept my stuff. Cause it was the winter time. And sure. I was like, you know what? Let's try this. This would be cool. And I was like, Oh my God. Like, why haven't I done that? Like, <laughs> like why? And I'll be honest. Why didn't Brad Hicks share this any earlier? Like, no, yeah. um, you know, but you know what I mean? Like, why didn't I check this out any sooner? And like, so I was pretty pumped at the end of the day because it's such an easy setup. You yeah. have your, your, you have your track mount where everything, all your butt ends fit through the one. And then you just quickly go up and there's like this little piece of uh, like silicone rubber that you just pushes your rod in at the tip end and, and you hang it. Simple, such a simple yeah. design, and and there are you know uh, we I think we've all used the uh, the Berkeley uh, rod holder, oh, yeah, the uh, you know one. Yeah, the yeah, foam yeah. one. Yeah. You know we have yeah. we actually still have that at the cottage in the boathouse. You know, like yeah, yeah. my uncle swears by that thing. This year I'm changing that. The Dubro <laughs> racks going up in there. Like we're we're organizing this boathouse. Gonna be like what what's going on here? What is? He's this? gonna be like what are you doing? He no he'll he's gonna love it. He's gonna love it, but. Um, yeah, no. So that's kind of how I found out about Dubro. And then, you know, I started, you know, you start looking more and, you know, yeah. you, you guys have like quite a, quite an impressive um, lineup of like, we're talking like rod racks, rod holders, and like, it doesn't just cater to, you know, um, 
just one generic size of rod you know what i mean it's not like you know bass rods where you're, you're looking anywhere from six six to let's say like um eight feet let's say being the your maximum length you we're talking saltwater rods here uh, yeah. salmon you know you, yeah. you're talking you know big game like musky uh rods we get a lot of guys. We get a lot of guys that order the tracker rods and put them in their ice shacks too for all their for all their ice rods. Because I think it's I'd the same a picture thing. of that. Yeah, it, it totally it's is the same thing. Like everybody throws throws their ice rods in a bucket, right? And then it's the tangled mess. Like, yep. okay, here's a good story, and I'll try to make it quick. No, no, because uh, no, my no. my wife had just asked me about this because one time I got a hook like directly in the tip of my nose. Oh. And she's like, how did that happen again? I forget because my oh. a good friend of mine, Eric, was with me. And I was like, we were going ice fishing. I had a Jeep Wrangler. So I'd like put my ice shack in like at an angle through the back yeah. window, right? I'd open the back hatch, slide the sled out, and it'd have my bucket of rods, fish finder, all that stuff. So I'm doing that. And as I'm sliding it out, the tip of one of the rods in the buckets like gets hung up on my seatbelt. So it's bending. And as I'm pulling farther... It finally gets past the seatbelt and, you know, does a quick jolt back, which sends a, a little spoon with a treble hook right into the oh. tip of my nose. Oh. And this thing is buried into the barb. And I look at my buddy and I'm like, dude, I got a freaking hook in my nose. You got to pull this out. And he's like, no, man, I can't do that. And I was like, what do you mean you can't do that? <laughs> We're standing in a parking lot in the dead of winter. And I got a hook hanging out of my nose with a rod connected to it. Like, You got to do this now. You got to pull this out. And he's like, no, man, I can't do it. So I literally went to the side mirror of my Jeep and like pulled this hook out of my nose. But hence having a, a, a nice tracker rod in the uh, in the old ice yeah. shack would have would have prevented it. But um, yeah, man, it, it's it. Yeah, you're right. A hundred percent. Like it, it'll cater any rod and reel combo all the way from an ice rod all the way up to an offshore saltwater rod. Uh, yeah. So it's like I like I've seen Dustin post uh, Dustin Nichols post about it too. Um, yeah, and he's like you know he's got all those saltwater rods and whatnot. Um, yeah. and and even in the um the your ad for it, a product uh, pictures and whatnot, it has like full on saltwater rods, big yeah. trolling reels. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, like it's super cool. Like you know, and like I there's actually a couple products that like I. I well for one, you know, the do world yeah. hat. It's 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 a comfortable fit. You know, I definitely like that. Right. Um right. but um like for instance, like the 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 line stripper, like that's yeah. such a yeah, genius yeah. Yeah. little so so I'll give right you there. I'll give you the inside scoop on that. So that part is actually an axle for a remote control airplane. So okay, I can see that. Yeah, the, the yeah. guys, the, the guys world. here, um, back in the day, they were like, uh, I mean, it's a few years back. They're like, man, we got to strip this line off our rods. They were getting ready to go on a trip, and you know, everybody uses like the screw into a bottle cap, but that ends up like wearing out. So, mm -hmm. um, what they did is the one side of that axle um is a, a like a threaded bolt almost so you put that through and then you could tighten it down with wrenches versus just putting a screw through and hoping it doesn't strip out so somebody here grabbed the axle and they're like that's a product you know what i mean so it's uh it's a pretty nifty little thing and i love it personally because like right before i went um up to the saint lawrence i literally stripped i think it was like eight rods and i usually oh, yeah. do like three or four at a time oh uh -huh. no so way you, you just open the bales on three or four and you tape the line to a bottle strip yeah. them off and you know as they get down on the spools you just cut each one i mean not all line length is going to be the same for, you know yeah. between the four rods so i'll just cut the one strip keep stripping cut the next one strip it nice. keep going and then the beauty is if not braid necessarily, but floor or mono, you can actually recycle that. So now you can take that plastic bottle and just throw it in the recycling yeah. bin, you know? Don't leave it on the bank. Yeah. Put it in the recycling. Um, man, like, I uh, I do have to say, if you can do, like, it's funny, like, 
there comes that time like for me like in the winter time where i'm like okay like i got all my reels lined out i'm like okay yeah. what am i changing this year you know is it line yeah, right. am i taking this reel putting it on this rod you know vice versa sure. and i could just see that just you know like okay need to strip let's go you know and like yep. and just yep. to be able to hook up to any drill that's got you yep. know a you know whether it's a corded or cordless you know drill yeah, right like, simple simple innovation and that's pretty neat the the, the axle you know of a remote control uh car or plane like that you know right there that's that's super neat um you know you guys also focus too about like um you got like uh down down regular trolling uh clips you know you go you got the knot tying tools uh yeah. lure fishing uh lure making uh yeah. tools you know you got the uh lure and leader tool like you know like you guys really yeah. it's yeah, yeah. I a lot of a it, lot of yeah a lot of it was all like stemmed off of just like personal needs around the office here and like like the stripper you know like um a lot of those tools um or a lot of the products were utilized from like the remote control airplane world it was like oh we have this here we could turn this into this you know what yeah. i mean um but like yeah i mean you know muskies are a huge thing in the north so yeah um, big time you know the um previous owner um not dewey but his son um he was a big musky fisherman so he wanted to make his own bucktail so we got the bucktail twister for making you know all the all the um uh, spun parts on the actual shaft of the of the bucktail um, which makes that unique a lot of those guys would vacation down in florida and um, they would go out saltwater fishing so you know some of the leader tools and things like that were developed through a need through friends of theirs down on the salt salt flats in the keys you know like it's just crazy like how it all comes about and then you fast forward to our our current owner who uh worked here for 22 years before he purchased the company um he's a he's more of a bass fisherman and you know i come on board i'm a bass fisherman uh one of the guys that um used to work here was a bass fisherman so that's when like dewey Bates was born and yeah. uh you know some Very of cool. our other other you know bass fishing stuff so yeah i mean we we have stuff to to help you on the, on or off the water all the way from the the oceans to your inland creek right so um, yeah it's it's you, one of those things we try to be as as versatile as possible and and it's you know you said it versatile like dubo yeah. fishing is like you really versatile and you, your lineup of products, you know, you, yeah, you're yeah. covering all your basis and, you know, you have unique little tools in between, but yeah. like, let's like, just for instance, just talking about the baits, like, you know, yeah. um, the, well, for instance, on, you spoke about on your uh, Friday night bites, you want to eat the big, big shaky head presentation, the worm of choice. For the one and only OG, Mr. Brian Scheller was the <laughs> shake and bake. And like yeah. shake and bake, I like that. Like I like yeah, the name, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, six inch uh, finesse worm. You know, you guys, you guys cover like I love Sankos. So, you know, you got the yeah. hot stick. Um, yeah. What was that really cool one? That I, oh, the one that I, I, I was like, man, that that is that is neat is the um, the little rock lobster. Dude, um, I so, feel like that's a smallie muncher. I it is one hundred percent. So when we were in um, the prototype phases, it was roughly this time last year. Uh, I was up in Minnesota on Mille Lacs fishing smallmouth, um, and Very that cool. little that little rock lobster dude just just caught him. Like I ran out. I shot like a whole bulk bag before I left because I was I was like, all right, it's I know it's a rocky lake. I've fished it for walleyes in the winter and stuff, but okay. I've never gone up there smallmouth fishing. Yeah, and I ran into this person at a fishing show in the winter that uh, owned the one lodge up there that I was familiar with, and uh, so I was like, talked to my old man. I was like, hey, like let's go smallmouth fishing. 
Like fish should either be pre-spawn or on beds when we're up there. Uh, I'm like, I got some good ideas and I got to test out these baits and this plastisol and all this stuff. So, um, dude, just crushed them. We ran out. So then we started using the regular rock lobster, cutting it down and throwing it on a Ned head and yeah, tossing bigger, it in there. Bigger dude, craw presentation. Like the, they would just gas it, dude. Awesome. Gas. Yeah. It's, um, so just going about like the like your plastic here like because you you have everything from like you know you guys even have six inch swim baits like yeah 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 uh, so they... yeah so let, let me let me start with this so we do have a couple profiles that were that used to be molded um by another company um and we were just packaging them which a lot of companies in the in the fishing world do that like there's only oh, yeah. a, there's only a handful of companies that actually inject the plastics right and yeah. obviously we have a long history here of plastic injection molding so it only made sense for us to bring the bait operation in house uh hence the guy that you know does most of the baits um but uh, <laughs> Like I said, I wear a lot of hats here and I spend a lot of weekends here, but, um, the, uh, you know, we were like, all right, well, we're going to do this. Let's, um, how are we going to be unique and different? So, you know, again, in the hobby realm, um, we, we make some, um, tires here from a remote control cars that is a plastisol based product so we went okay. to our supplier and we we're like hey we're going to make these fishing baits um we want to design our own plastisol uh to be used to make these things so they had sent us some samples they had a little bit of previous history with um doing some plastisol for um a guy that used to shoot baits in Wisconsin way back in the day. Um, right. So he's, they were like, we have a starting point. Let us send, send you some samples and you guys can play with them, things like that. So we did some pretty extensive testing and we landed on the plastic that we currently use. It's only available to us, nobody else. Um, and it's neat. got some very interesting properties. So a durability, like the first thing I noticed, um, with with the plastisol we use like you know okay shaky head like used to throw that a ton i used to use a uh, zoom trick worm uh i've used the guggen uh shake uh their shaky head worm um there's a few other ones and like you'd get like two maybe three fish out of a plastic before you'd have to throw it away with this yeah. stuff i was getting like seven eight nine i think the most right fish on. i got off of one plastic worm was like 15 one time so i was like all right well nice. there's an upside so then uh we were at a fishing show one time and uh somebody was like hey how does your plastic remelt and i was like i don't know that's a great question so we cut it in. I took a Ned worm, cut it in half, took a lighter, lit the ends, stuck it back together and let it cool down for a second and go to stretch it. And it was almost it was pretty much just as strong as when it originally came out of the mold. So like you can remelt that plastic. And that's something that's that cool. we haven't advertised a ton about. Um, yeah, I can see it, I... it was something that we just recently discovered. Uh, this past winter but so you got that aspect um the other thing was is uh when we were going through this whole thing um i think it was the boss man was going through his boat and we were looking for for a bait uh to uh kind of replicate the color and he had this bait in with a bunch of z-man baits and if you know, like if, if you put yeah. a Z-Man with any other kind of plastic, like melts. it melts and deforms Big it. Big ball, yeah. Not do, bro. No way. Yeah. So That's cool. Well, so there you go. I got, I got a bag on my desk that I put a, a Z-Man Ned Worm in with, uh, I think it was like one of our swim baits or one of our, uh, it was the hot stick. It's a five-inch Senko. 
and yeah. it still hasn't hasn't deformed it done anything to it so our plastic plays well with uh z-man cool. plastics as well so that's awesome yeah because that's the biggest like uh, you know just uh for any angler you know yeah it's you know it is kind of hard to you know stick to a certain one because you know as mm -hmm. you know that works with that but then all you yeah. know so anyways we we try we try multiple things but then sometimes you know we got chatter baits and we might have certain like for me I love chatter baits but I yeah. I have certain certain styles of trailers I like to put sure. on them sure sure and sure you always have to be mindful when you got a Z yeah. man a yeah. last tech in that yeah. in that box why because yeah. you know at times i've forgotten and i go to yeah. use it and i'm like oh no oh, yeah. what is this <laughs> thing i'm like yeah. what the? it's yeah. like this thing grew something on it yeah. um but yeah i would definitely say like uh that like that's really cool to hear because for yeah. me and just like any other anglers out there you know mm -hmm. we guys who love fishing plastics i yeah. i do enjoy fishing plastics uh you guys yeah duvro has a really awesome and you know what to be honest with you i really think you cover all the bases for that, a, a bait that, you, you know yeah, like you that's covered, what we started with yeah you know we, you got we, your columns you know your water yeah. columns figured out that's cool yeah that's cool. And, and and that was kind of the initial concept because we we revamped the whole lineup and we launched it last year at icast um but Ooh, when I, that's coming when up we, yeah, when we went through and uh, selected, okay, well, what patterns are we going to make? You know, because at the time we were carrying um, a stick bait, a craw, a little Ned craw, and a real skinny finesse worm. Um, and we still have some of those things, um, but like as those sell out, they get discontinued because it's it's not the same as like our current Dewey Bates lineup as far as plastic and colors and things like that. But um, we really worked through um, and, and put a lot of thought into, okay, what's a lot of people fishing right now? What's going to cover all of our bases from top to bottom? Yeah, 100%. And, and then not only that but like we we kind of researched like what's your most common colors and then we added some very unique ones in into the mix as well and yeah something we get complimented on all the time is some of the unique colors that we do offer um yeah like you know across the board frosted animal cookie is probably the one i get the most comments on that and is that cool and that was something that was made by total accident. We uh, we had a new mold come in and I wanted to shoot it and I had some stuff I was playing around with and then I had some white pearl and I just like threw it in there and melted it because I'm like, who cares? Like this isn't going to the public. We just want to look at the bait profile yeah. actually shot, you know? So we yeah. shot it and, uh, and from there shoot. on, Frosted Animal Cookie was born. And uh, actually, the boss man had taken that up to New York last year on the St. Lawrence and just crushed him on it on a, dr on well, a drop. I I could see I could see that. Um, oh, yeah, I it it's a it's a really it is a cool color. Um, but like at the same time, like you know, when you do have you know, like every like I, you look, you're talking to a guy that likes green pumpkin, blue and black, yeah. and yeah, yeah, white. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I'm, I'm right. very basic that way. Sure, but you know, there's a lot of cool, unique colors up in there. You know, like the uh, the yeah. peppered, um, you know, peppered alert. Yeah, pepper alert. Yeah, you know, you guys got your peanut butter and jelly, um, the, like the frosted animal ghost belly. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, ghost there's bellies like, like your ad color. We got uh, we released ghost belly, demon, and lava this year, and we released demon that's and it. lava yes. right around uh, springtime because it's got that hot orange in there. But yeah. that that demon color, it, it's basically a green pumpkin black flake top with a lava bottom, yeah, um, which is like your your orange or your fire craw type type color, you know. Um, but if yeah. you put that up next to a craw. Dude, it's like almost identical color wise. So I so I purchased a bunch of these fantastic baits to try out for my season up here. And I actually purchased the demon 
to put on the back of a chatterbait because I yeah. was like, man, like that thing like would go perfect on it. Um, on the rump shaker, uh, the 3.75 swim yeah. bait, which I'm a uh, huge, huge yeah. in the paddle, paddle tail, uh, yeah, yeah. Swim, swim baits. Um, just the small, I like the smaller guys, uh, especially yeah. like river fishing. Um, but that there, I was like, and so anyways, I put one on and I was like, wow. Like, you know, I was like, yeah. and it, it the color it's a it's a it's a cool color in a lot of places it's either like fire craw and it's just like mm -hmm. red and yeah. orange and right. that's it where this has that that bowl that bowl green pumpkin blackish back you yeah. know um yeah. but so you had mentioned another thing here uh in in our talkings of um the podcast and you you said icast so will, yeah. will dubro be at icast this year again yeah yeah we uh we will be at icast again this year uh we got some new products launching um we're they're typically there every year they were they took a couple years off during like the covid years obviously um but uh yeah, we were there last year. That's when we launched uh, the twister track knobs, cool. you know, the accessory knobs for yeah. um, your kayaks, and then the Dewey Bates lineup. So that was last year. This year is going to get even more interesting. Yeah. So what? Like, okay. So for for Dubro, um, do you guys have your booth already set up? Like your and all that like you like your booth number sorry for yeah uh we'll be in booth 4319 it's either 4319 or 4318 i forget off the top of my head um but uh yeah we're we're right there kind of center of the exhibit and yeah uh, okay yeah yeah i see it yeah yep and uh we'll uh thursday afternoon uh we're gonna be doing a live bait tank uh demo in the hog trough so we'll probably stream that on our uh facebook and oh, youtube cool. channels um so i gotta give that whole presentation so no pressure you know like i've been kind of freaking out about that but <laughs> but uh oh, I, i'm yeah. sure you're just gonna you're gonna nail it like you yeah you're I, just I gonna already go yeah, he's gonna put on the, the new bro hat, you know, like yeah, well, you know, it's, Kevin Van Dam it, you know what I mean? Like yeah, well, Kevin Van Dam is gonna be walking around there, Mike Iconelli, <laughs> like you name yeah. it, like all oh, the big names in fishing are are walking around that show. So yeah, no pressure, no pressure, you know. But no, uh, no pressure. No, it, you know? it it'll it'll be good, man. It'll be fun, and um, you know, uh, iCast is always a, a business event, right? Like yeah, there's uh, okay. the the catching up with folks that you may only see once a year down there, but it's uh, where, you know, all the new products for next year or the end of this year get released. Um, you know, a lot of uh, retailers and media people get to vote on new products for the year and things like that. And then, um, you know, that's where a lot of um, your local uh tackle shops your big tackle shops come um they place orders for the upcoming year um see the new products and you know look at what they want to bring in um you know to their shops for the upcoming years so um it is business it is a little bit of fun it it's like i said anybody and everybody who's in the fishing realm from saltwater to freshwater is in the house walking around yeah that's and, super cool uh, it, i mean i remember oh, my, we'll be there yeah yeah we'll be there um uh myself john rap randy newton matt gibson and dustin nichols uh oh. we'll be we'll be doing some podcasts out of the do bro oh, yeah. booth with some nice some folks from around the show um so it's it's always a good time it's always fun um it is you know, business focused, um, you know, it's one of those things. Like I remember when I first heard about ICAST and I'm like, Oh dude, who, do, who do I have to know to get in there? You know, um, because it's not, oh, okay. in the public, yeah. you know, so it's a, it's a very unique setting, but, um, if you ever get the opportunity to, to go to ICAST, you should definitely take it up yeah. no matter who you are or oh. where you're from. Like, yeah, because there's, okay. there's people from around the world that come into there. Like we have a lot of dealers from, you know, Australia that come in, um, Asia, Europe, 
things like that. Like it's not just like a U.S. based thing. It's it's people from around the world. Yeah, and it's huge. It's it, it is huge in that way because you know the whole world. I feel like the whole world like watches this. Like the the whole fishing industry. You know, a lot of podcasts begin to pop out about you know like mm-hmm. what what yeah. was great and you know. So for for Dubro, like as they get ready for this, like what 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 can we expect? Like can can we can we get into that at all, or yeah. is that yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. something that? You know, for, you know, it being, you know, top secret for, you know, eye cast eyes only because at for, the same time, we don't, I'm sure there's a lot of Canadians that go down to it. I actually know a couple yeah. of guys that go down to it. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so like Dubro, like if you're like, yeah, give us a sneak yeah. peek here. What what can we expect? Because this is launching the week of iCast, So I'm probably in Orlando sweating right now, but uh <laughs> uh, so we came out with the twister track knob last year uh for kayak accessories like it was something that uh matt gibson and i had designed um just something a little more unique a little more compact yeah um him and i are both from the new canoe realm so we were using those plastic knobs that are made by the competition that are like all plastic no insert and it takes you Mm -hmm. like three years to tighten something down and we were like dude this takes forever yeah so um and not only that but a lot of um a lot of your fastening knobs have a brass insert so we wanted to do stainless because stainless on stainless as you can see just lasts and it runs smoothly um so uh, this year to go along with the knob is uh, we're releasing our own track bolts. Um, cool. So we'll have cool. these in inch, inch and a half and two inch sizes. And then to, go along, to go along with that, um, we got these uh, colored washers and we'll offer it in all the same colors as the knobs, black, red, orange, blue, and lime green. Yeah. Um, but, but the washers are super unique. So this is actually used in an archery product. And uh, we were chatting with our friends over at Catch Products. And uh, okay. you know, they've been they've been doing some interesting things with like their crossbars and things like that. And one of the things that Duke discovered over there was like a lot of your tracks and your kayaks are actually like they're not totally flat. A lot of them are twisted and things like that. And that's usually from when it gets tightened down to your kayak. So when they were doing that cross member, like you'd have one post like kind of angled in the other one straight up. So um, this is actually like a really dense uh, rubber material. So it's very forgiving. So like you could literally tighten down anything on this for like ever like you could snug it down it's going to be totally tight and whatever's on there isn't coming loose but like if you have a twisted track like that this will conform and fill in the void that you have in your track from being twisted and your accessory being totally squared up and flush um so we'll have those as well and then uh so the retail on the washers is going to be three ninety nine for a four pack. Uh, the knobs we currently sell a four pack for ten bucks. A uh, four pack of bolts will be ten bucks, and then um, we're going to have what we call the track pack. So you'll get four bolts, four washers, and four knobs of your color choice and bolt size choice for uh, twenty five or twenty four bucks. So, nice yeah, and so an awesome, awesome product yeah like yeah, that's it's, cool it's something that everybody uses um I don't something know to you pick like up me. and have extras yeah. of like like honestly like it's kind of funny we spend well, at the same time we spend a lot of time you know always we always got extra tackle and whatnot but we don't always right. mentally think about the things that might possibly go wrong on the water <laughs> and knobs are one of those things where like you know for seats and whatnot yep. you know you, you got a knob that you know you tighten you've been tightening down all day yeah. and then all of a sudden you yeah. give it that one two turn and it's just like you've stripped it all and now yep. you, you know you're yeah. in a pedal drive and your your seats like you know you're yep. going back and forth right. um no, I honestly, guys, uh, get out there, uh, 
pick up. This would be an item to definitely have in the black pack or wh whatever crate you have in the back. Yeah. Extra, yeah. keep them, you know, in the trailer at home if you got, you know, and at a price point of 24 for a, a pack with your choice and size of bolting. Man, you, I gotta Bolts say, like that, and washers, dude. Yeah. Like, that's the thing. Like, currently, you have to buy, like, you know, bolts and knobs yep. separately. Um, obviously, Duke over at Catch has been selling the washers already for, for his tower system. And we were kind of waiting to launch it with the bolts. Um, but, um, I mean, it's one of those, like, it's like terminal tackle, right? Like, yeah. I don't know how many times I've lost uh, a track bolt or a knob or whatever. And, and obviously, like we stated earlier, I'm a new canoe guy. So I got four knobs and bolts holding my seat down. And mm -hmm. if I'm missing one of those or whatever, or if I'm taking my seat on and off, the, the ease of how fast these knobs spin on and off, save me like six minutes at the ramp if not more you know like it just well, took forever right yeah well and and that's the thing when you have a chair that bolts down like you know bolts into your track mount mm -hmm. and if you whether you car top that or yeah. you adjust it right. for you know a buddy or whatever um those knobs like you're constantly going in and out in and out in and out yeah. and a lot of them they don't hold up and then yeah. what ends up happening, like I said, you know, your seat's not really long. It, it, to be honest, it can really ruin your day on the water. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. it's I've and if you before. Oh, and if you're in a pedal drive and you, in your seat, like, because you got to mm -hmm. think like when you're in a pedal drive and you're actually like beginning to pedal your force, that that seat is what's taking the force. So whatever's in bolting it down, you know, they're, they're after a while, you're getting a little bit of wear and tear now yeah. at the point where you can't keep it bolted down, yep. you know? Yeah. Like it is Dude, back, break it, you know, back I, in my, yeah. Back in my Jackson days, I used to float out of a blue sky all the time. I'd fish tournaments out of a blue sky. Yeah. That was like that. Nice, man. And the, the knobs for adjusting the back of the seat would always come loose on me. So like, yeah, that was one of one of the things I had in mind, like when we uh, were designing the knobs, and then like discovered we could use these rubber washers. I'm like, dude, if I would have had those, that seat would have never moved on me. And I forget wow. what I ended up doing. I think I ended up putting like an extra bolt in the track with a knob fastened down, yeah, and then the one that's in the actual seat, and it that's what I used to prevent it. So I had to use an extra two bolts and, and, uh, knobs, but dude, that, that thing was a bass catching machine. I miss oh, that thing. Sometimes it, it's, uh, <laughs> I had the opportunity to go out on one and yeah, yeah, it was pretty cool watching my son go out on it too. Like yeah, it, was, yeah. it, it yeah. was cool, man. Like I, I gotta say that is, that is a fishing platform. Um, one time we put one. like, one time we put like four four big grown men on one and we oh, still no, couldn't uh, get it to sink, dude. <laughs> like that thing was awesome. Yeah. Now, so you know, going into you know, iCast also, uh, you know, with you know, you got the paddle and fin, you guys are gonna be obviously doing podcasts on the spot. You're gonna be, you know, demoing um new products, you know, at the same yeah. time, you're gonna be over at the pond you know, showing everybody, you know, your big stage moment as we'll call it. Um, yeah. you know, what else, like, what else are we, can we expect do you, from, you know, do you, do you want me to play the promo video I sent you or do you want to just dive into it? Cause I could share um, the promo video on here. You know you what? If, if you would like to share the promo video, I say, let's do this lights, cameras, action. All right. Let me, uh, let me nice. open it up here. Just give me two seconds. If it opens. But um, yeah, man, uh, another kayak accessory that. Um, it, it, but think, is that something that Dubro is like, so, like making their. Because like, like you said, there's a lot of boating products, a lot of. But the kayak with, you know, the industry, the way it's going, you know, the more people getting into kayak fishing. Um, you know, is that something that Dubro is really leaning? I want to say, like, you know, 
putting all their eggs in one basket. But is, is that something that you guys are really focusing more on, you know, and being yeah, somebody I mean, coming like yourself, who's, you know, an experienced angler, uh, especially spends a lot of time in a kayak being a part of the new canoe team, you know, right. that is, you know, if I was, you know, a company owner, I would be like, yeah, this is, this is somebody I need to listen to because like the idea, the knowledge, the time, the experience, it is there, you know, and, understand yeah. and you obviously understand the industry which is cool so but yeah don't let me take any away from no, this no, video no. i was just gonna say like yeah we're definitely like slowly building some some kayak accessories into the market right and into yeah. our inventory lineup it's not like we're just like all right we're gonna become the next yak attack or yak gadget or something like yeah. that um you know, it's, that's not like the objective there. It's like, no. you know, we see little things that we can do, uh, with our injection molding background and not only that, but, um, we try to be universal. So like these knobs actually work on an aluminum boat. A lot of aluminum boats have track systems built into them. So like that was part of the concept too. And with the newest item, like we made it so there was three different mounting options um, to go either in a boat or a kayak or an ATV, a UTV, um, you know, whatever it may be. So yeah, uh, I'll roll this and then uh, and then we can uh, we can jump into the uh, the the nitty gritty fine details because this All is right. like twenty here. Can you hear the audio? Uh, I cannot. All right, let me uh, let me do this. Let me, let me stop sharing it. I know what I forgot to do. Sorry, guys. Um, don't win the, the anticipation is building. Share tab. Oh, it will not. Uh, not do that. I don't know. We'll let it roll. Yeah, let it roll. All of that is cool. No way. Oh. Wow. boom <laughs> okay so we're talking like just from this video here are we talking a cup holder that you can one because like i and i said it to you backstage i said the one spot that i put in my liska all my baits throughout the day where i siphon through them to you know try and get something everything in the kitchen kitchen sink to eat it um yeah is my cup holder and at the same time you know you got all those you, you just kind of clip them on and the water bottle sits in there um yeah. you know it rains you take on some water or whatever and your cup holder is full of water that my friend that is awesome like <laughs> just seeing the capabilities of what that thing has and like and i'm just going by with the video and, and what we saw yeah and uh, man that is cool like that thing is like your cup holder slash tackle holder it's, you know it's, and it's, it's uh cool. yeah it's it's so we're calling it um the name of it is the do more cup holder right obviously a play on Dubro, but Jeez, this does, this does more than just hold a cup right? it. and uh it it all stems from so we have a product called the hangman um which we re-released last year um and it's mm -hmm. got this built-in line cutter 
yeah, um, which is just your standard razor blade. So it's super replaceable. You can get stainless steel razor blades. But the beauty of that is, is if this goes dull, it's one screw and a nut and it pops out and you put a new 25 cent razor blade in and you have a brand new fresh line cutter. It's not like you got to put it on the sharpening stone or anything like that. Yeah, so, yeah. so when I saw the original hangman and we brought that back to life, I'm like, dude, like we can incorporate that line cutter, Amazing. Um, which we had patented back in the day. I'm like, we can incorporate that like, on something else and i would like i remember going home and i was like what the hell are we gonna put that on like i'm like i'm a kayak guy where where does that make sense and then i looked down at my kayak and i'm like oh you're an idiot put it on the cup holder so yes. you know like dude i like, know all about that dude and and uh we were talking about it you know like you have that jackson cup holder and yeah I probably got like five of those things right and <laughs> yeah dude and uh so uh cup holder bait holder but yeah. that that yeah. is so i had i had drawn up a concept so i'll, I'll kind of give you like the evolution like this was pretty much like the first design of it, so to speak. Um, this is probably actually like version four, but this is almost original, right? Um, and myself, Matt Gibson and John Rapp sat in a locked room for like two days. And uh, I rent, this is 3D printed. So like I have a 3D printer here in the shop. That's how we do a lot of our prototyping. And uh, you know, I had a drawing. I had one printed up. Those guys walked in because um, Matt's in Indianapolis. Obviously, John's in West Virginia. They made the travel out to Chicago and they walked in the room and I was like, OK, what do you boys think? And we put it on the table and they were both like, dude, like there's yeah. something there, you know. So then you get three kayak fishing geeks sitting around a table for like two hours a day, 10 hours a day or I'm sorry, for two days, 10 hours a day, um, you make some tweaks and some changes. So, um, you know, we kind of went through a couple reiterations of this um, and we ended up on this final shape. So the concept so was, cool. okay, how do we make this universal? Obviously this fits into an existing cup holder on like a boat in your truck. Um, you know, in, uh, in your ATV, four wheeler, kayak, whatever. Um, and then it was like, okay, well, we know how everything mounts to a track with the, the insert in the bottom and a track bolt and a washer. So we'll have that version two. And then, um, the third version, what we did is we made like a little male track piece that attaches through this one screw and there's a three inch piece of track um, that uses the tracker rod end caps to secure it to whatever oh, surface. So I actually God. put put one of these in my boat, like up on the front console by the mm -hmm. trolling motor. So I have one of these hanging there, you know, fastened right below the trolling motor. So and then if I want to take it off, all I do is just uh, take this one screw out and this comes off but the black piece would stay in the track that's mounted so we're like all right well we can be universal on mounting the thing i'm like what else do we need to do and um you know it when we if you notice like these holes around here i believe are a little bit smaller than the the final version yeah we're like, dude, like we could mount some accessories to this, like a, a panfish portrait pro or like like a GoPro camera, a cell yeah. phone holder, yeah. uh, you know, whatever you want to mount that mounts through a track bolt. So we made that hole big enough so a track bolt will go through it. And then we put this outer lip on there. So it actually my track bolt go. Um, so it actually captures the base plate of the track bolt and it sits flush in there. So when you're tightening down, like this bolt doesn't spin or pop It gives off. something to grab. Yeah. And you just kind of hold your finger under it to hold it up while yeah. you put your accessory on, tighten Snug it, it down. down. 
yeah and then you're good to go oh um, dude obviously like this early version like the tool holder for like your pliers scissors whatever you want um i the first versions was really small well dustin nichols is part of our pro team and our r d so i had sent this to him and he's like bro you got to make that bigger he's like my pliers don't fit all the way down and i was like okay how much bigger so we discussed it and i made that adjustment sent him a, a new prototype and he called me back and he was like that's what i needed you're the man talk to you later bro and hung up the phone and off we went <laughs> so, <laughs> but but he also brought up a good quick point and easy too. i like it yeah he brought up a good point too he's like make the hole to the left and the right of that a little bit bigger because he uses a leash on his pliers um that has a carabiner on one end because sometimes yeah. he takes it off and like throws it on another boat or whatever so we we open that hole up a little bit so that way like an actual carabiner will fit through there click on and then you could unclip and whatever i use never lost tethers and um with a lot of their tethers now they're offering like one of those smaller carabiners and it fits in there perfect so i kind of love that because i bounce back and forth between a kayak and a boat quite a bit these days universal uh, i like it i yeah. like it and then and then you know you hit the nail on the head right like we've all fished in the rain and uh yeah. left kayak, kayaks out in the rain and then you come out to the kayak or go to get off the water and you got to literally pull your cup holder off and like dump it upside down and dump all your baits and terminal tackle you threw in there out because it's half full of water while well, we put drain holes in the bottom which nobody's got and it's plays such a huge role man like it it does like it really does because you got to think of all the times that you know that it fills up with water and it has nowhere yeah. to go right so well i don't know like i've like what back in the day when i used to run like the whole tournament scene and fish a lot of tournaments on the road whatever you're leaving your your boat pretty much like almost virtually rigged up on the trailer ready to go so the next morning when you get up to go out pre-fishing or go out and hit the tournament like your cup holders on the boat right like ready to rock and obviously you're leaving baits in there and it rains overnight you come out the yep. next morning now you got rusty hooks and rusty terminal tackle or yeah you know, crank baits or whatever it may be and you're like dude god damn it like why didn't they put holes in the bottom of this like obviously there's a few of us that were in that room that have experienced that so i mean we That's, literally put the the holes in there and in that video so in that video it's me holding the cup holder and i have i didn't have like a jug or anything so i grabbed like the coffee pot and i filled it up with water and i was literally just dumping it in as fast as i could without it spilling all over the place and it literally drained out as fast as you dumped it in well yeah you can see in the video it's just like yeah. it, it, it's almost like a, a, a little camping shower you know what i mean like it just comes right. out comes out real quick like that yeah. shower faucet um yeah. I, like so for this whole cup holder you know yeah. like to be able to a somewhere to, you know keep your water bottle should you need yep. to you know yep so, and then you get into the next part where you've offered a selection of areas to either a attach track mounting or hang your baits. hang baits, which, you know, I don't know. I don't know if you've ever experienced this. I'm sure most people have, but I, um, I was thankfully wearing uh, flip flops the day that I did it or sandals, but I stepped on a crank bait. Oh, had I been. Yeah. Yeah. um and i was you i'm usually bare feet but yeah uh, this day i'd had um sandals on i stepped on this thing and i felt it go just this little prick yeah and i was like yeah. oh i had the crankbait hooks right in to this so oh, you know and i'm notorious <laughs> and and more and uh, you know for just yeah. throwing things on 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 deck and i've really stop that because of that but mm -hmm. that solves that issue right there there's nothing worse than stepping on lures hooks whatever and you know simple things getting a hook especially a treble hook in the bottom of your foot 
Dude, have fun brutal. getting that out on the water, yeah. especially if you're by yourself, and have fun yeah. trying to get all your stuff out of the water while you have a <laughs> treble hook in the bottom <laughs> of your foot. You cannot step without feeling no. the pain. No. That thing right there Dude. has solved a lot yeah. of problems yeah. that you won't need to. Now, um, you know, the pliers too. You got to think, like, with that plier, being able to, you know, set your pliers in. But the tether part, I'm huge on that. I always yeah. tether my phone. Um, yeah. I tether a lot of things in my kayak. I know there. I know there's a lot of products that you know they say, oh well, you know it floats. So, yeah, but here's right. the thing: when you fish rivers, um, yeah. that's great. It floats. You should be able to hopefully catch it downstream. But if you're in a river that's moving quite fast, good luck yeah. catching up with something yeah. that's floating because you're gonna you're gonna lose it. So I always right. tether my stuff down. Yeah. Um, so that's, uh, man, like, yeah. In the, in the I, line, I can't cutter, wait to get my hand on that. I, I, I always like to point this out because everybody's like, Oh, aren't those gaps too narrow to like fit something in there to cut it? No. Like you could literally fit, you know, like the crankbait. Um, like when we were up fishing the St. Lawrence, we were fishing jerk baits. Like when I went to cut my jerk bait off, I could fit the nose of that in there and cut it off right at the hoop at the at the nose of the yeah of the uh of the jerk bait the so ring like, of the jerk bait yeah yeah but like this line cutter is just so huge because like instead of like fumbling around where's my scissors or you know pulling your scissors out putting them back in you could just literally reach down and dink cut you're done retie on your next bait and cut the tag end off just by pressing on it and away you go versus fumbling around with like some kind of cutting device or whatever well, I could tell you right now that I know exactly where I'm going to put that when I get my hands on that. On my Liska, it is going on that front hatch. Yeah. I have a piece of track mounting right there. It's yeah, going to yeah. go there. That's, that's the spot because I also think I can probably put my camera mount on that too. Yeah. It's a just a shorter camera mount for my yeah. phone. Um, but like that right there i'm mm -hmm. that that is cool i didn't like i gotta say like for everybody who's listening right now i i i think dubro's on to something here like i i think they <laughs> they really knocked it out of the park you know what i mean like home run right there um no, yeah it's, man it's, 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 uh, like yeah no honestly it, like give yourselves a pat on the back here like that is awesome dude like to have like in its I love it. It's it's a simple. It's it's simple. You know, it's got innovation. It's versatile. You know, yeah. well, it, that's it's easy. Funny, it doesn't like, need to be complex. Not everything in this world needs to be complex. You know what I mean? Like this is simple. I like it. The the one thing, like, uh, it was funny. Like when we were going through the whole process of like designing it and things like that. Like, I'm like, come on, man. Like, and I was joking around when I said it. I was like nobody has had any innovation on a cup holder you know like like a cup holder is a car or something you know like, yeah but, but that's the thing like when you think about it it's like you hear cup holder and you're like oh it's just gonna hold my cup right but like when you actually and that's why we called it the do more utility cup holder because like it's literally a tool that you can use for so many different things so um i know like the million dollar question is like price point, right? So, um, the boat well, yes. that just drops into a cup holder that just drops into an existing cup holder, uh, retail on that's going to be $24.95. And then, whether you get the side rail mount or the T bolt mount, um, that'll be $29.95. And obviously, that'll come what? with a track, a track bolt, a washer, um, it'll come fully assembled. The blade will be in place with the blade guard, all stainless steel hardware on it. So nothing's going to rust on you. Um, and then same thing with the rail mount. I got some really cool things. Like, obviously, like I said, I got one of these in my boat, but there's a little uh, creek that I fish by my place where I go and bank fish. And um, I use these uh, cases, uh, Lakewood products. And I want to actually mount that track onto the side of one of their tackle boxes and, and have one of these off the side. Now I can just carry around my tackle box, 
throw my coffee drink or my bottle of water in there, have yeah. a line cutter ready to go instead of putting a pair of scissors or pliers in my yeah. pocket or buried in the tackle box, things like that. So um, it's, it's, it's pretty unique, man. Like we've uh, it really like is in, in the video um, we tried to take photos of it, like in a met as many different places as possible because like, you could virtually take this anywhere and utilize it anywhere. Like there's so many different awesome. things like, you know, for guys making YouTube videos, it's like, dude, you could have one of those cup holders in the cup holder, of your truck or your car or whatever, and then have your camera mount on it instead of like suction cupping it to like the windshield, things like that. Yeah, like, Dude, yeah. there's like so many there different you go. like opportunities and like scenarios we've played out in our mind where you could like actually utilize one of these things so um it is cool man it's it's definitely different like i said i've used it in a boat in the kayak i love it all around um we've literally been testing this for jesus i don't even know how long at this point it's been quite a while i, I um, feel like uh it's this is i think there's going to be a lot of people like uh, there gonna be a lot of anglers, I think, who are just yeah. really going to be driven to like when yeah. they see that video, and like, yeah. and you you see, there's one shot in the video where where it's it's on the front of a, a rail mount. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if it's like a tri track or like the uh, the boondocks. Um, I think it. I think it's the boondocks. That was uh, yeah, Matt the boondocks com yeah. commander. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I should know that Jeff Little was always on the show talking about boondocks. Um, <laughs> what I was going to say is when I seen that there, I was like, that one shot mm -hmm. was like, I can see what I can do with that thing. Like yeah, yeah. I know exactly where, um, where it's going to fit. Like, mm -hmm. and that's where right there I'm going, boom, it's going yeah. on the front of the Liska because for me, it, it's, it's it's right yeah. out of sight like it's yeah. sorry it's it's in my line of sight but it's it's not you know it's not off it's to not side. Out of arm's reach yeah yeah it's not out of arm's reach you know i don't have to do a crazy turn to the back you know right. um and i like to stand up and fish um yeah. i can stand up and not have to worry that like i might put a trouble hook through the bottom of my sandals again <laughs> this is where it's at i like it man i really like that yeah um, it's funny because because matt that's a picture of matt gibson and uh it was funny because he was like he's been shooting a bunch of content for us and uh like tutorial videos things like that he's like dude I yeah got no great way to like get my cell phone holder up because he's shooting all the videos on his new iphone right okay and, yeah yeah uh, and he's like dude he's like i feel like my my uh my cell phone's just too low he's like I don't want to give everybody the ball shot, you know, like he's like, it, it's nothing but crotch shots. He's like, how do I get that up? And I was like, and we're like talking through it. And he's like, well, I got that crossbar, but he's like, I feel like that's just like still too low. He's like, I need to get it up like another four or five inches. And I was like, you're an idiot. And so am I, I'm like, you know where you mount that thing? And he was like, oh yeah i'm an idiot and he thought of it then he's like dude the cup holder he's like that's so perfect so that's been, why you yeah know, you, you it, need extra eyes you know friends yeah. are there to help you you know what i mean right 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 so like that's why we went through an extent extensive process of testing on and off the water and uh just seeing like what how many different things we can utilize in this thing um and it it turned out awesome man like i'm i'm not gonna lie like i know i had a a hand in um you know coming up with the concept and designing it and things like that but from the fact of being able to use it on the water um dude i'm like super jazzed about it and it's like oh, it's been you should be it's been so hard to like bite my tongue and like not tell everybody in the world <laughs> that I know. Um, I could, oh, that's amazing. That's I, I remember you know, when impressive. We were, well, I remember when we were talking about jumping on here, I'm like, Hey, can I tell you a secret? And you were like, yeah, secret, safe with me. And I was like, thank God I can finally tell somebody, <laughs> you know? And I was like, dude, so, yeah, dude. you know, like I said, this oh, is man. here in the week I cast, right. And we're recording yeah, a little so, before that, yeah, but we're a little before, but it's but that's like, cool. 
but it's like dude like literally like i've been wanting to tell people about this since like last year and it's like ah, i can't 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 let the cat out of the bag yet you know but I, uh, uh... I'm jazzed yeah. for it, man. No, dude, I, I'm super. I, and like I said, um, when when that thing drops, you know, I'm going to be going do, 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 online and getting myself. Uh, oh, dude, no, I, I'm I'm going to send you one of the first ones that pops out of the mold. You know. Okay. I mean? so, well, yeah, that's uh, that's you, too bro. kind, dude. I, I appreciate you, that. I appreciate that. Um, what I was going to say though is that's the I think for Dubro, and I'm sure maybe there's a lot of companies like this, um, mm-hmm. but it's you it's really unique that you know you where it started you know right right right, what it's come to and you know i feel like everybody um at dubro brings something a little bit different you know what i mean like you know you know just if you if you really want to look at it you've you know you're uh killing two birds with one stone you know like you fish out of a kayak you fish out of a boat yeah. So, you know, there's a lot of people like myself where, yeah, okay, I, I have fished out of a boat, you know, like yeah. I, I've been there. But right. at the same time, um, I'm a kayak angler. And sure. um, for me, I, I gravitate more to the kayak crew. Um, yeah. But what I was, what I'm go- getting at here is that at the end of the day, your ability to gravitate to, to like, yeah, we're all anglers at yeah. the end of the day, yeah. but they, stuff doesn't work the same yeah. you know we yeah. you need unique studying and what you bring to dubro fishing i feel like um you really cross both bridges you know what i mean like you're you're bringing all and you're also bringing two communities together at the same time but yeah. where you're fishing the products at dubro you know you're covering everything from bass fishing to salt water yeah. you know and everything in between you know for the northern pike walleye musky guys you know the guys up in uh canada who are you know you're buying your rod racks and whatnot and um and yeah like i i'm man i like since i found out about dubro you know like i have to say like i am pretty i'm pretty excited with the amount of things i'm i'm especially learning about dubro tonight and also you know just getting to sit down and talk with you like man like this is this has been a really 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 fun episode yeah um but like i did i did want to touch you know at the same time that you know when it comes down to icast you know i do wish you all the best i hope you have a a blast out there man um is there anything else you can you know tell us you know before we 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 sign off you know what uh um just uh just go to the website dubrofishing.com d-u-b-r-o fishing.com um use adam's promo card promo code r run 10 and uh that's all caps um so you guys can pick up these cup holders um we do have more exciting things coming in the bass realm probably right around the first of the year um stuff we've been working really hard on as well um that uh we didn't want to release this year just because we were so focused on the cup holder and the track bolts and everything like that so no that's um, cool that's cool yeah yeah so uh keep an eye out for uh you know right after the first of the year for some uh really cool uh juicy things in the dewey baits lineup and, Ooh, that's, and uh, i'm always excited for new baits uh, you'll uh you guys Whoa. will be pretty stoked, um, but yeah, man, pick up what a cup holder, pick up a yeah. track pack, all that good stuff, man. Yeah, dude, and I, I you know, I feel like people are gonna want to get more out of Brian Shelley tonight, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to slow him down here, okay? He can't talk about these these Dewey baits that he keeps kind of like trickling in there. There might be something more, and I'm like, come on, just tell us, tell us, you know? Um, no, dude, like I can't, I'm, I can't spill the juice on that, but and that's okay. It, Don't worry about it, that. It'll we'll be just unique. keep crying for it. It'll it'll be unique. You guys will love it, and uh, yeah, I'll definitely uh, sit back down and chat with you when uh, we're ready to launch, man. Because I think yeah, let, are gonna we're gonna get you uh, the more products uh, Dubro's yeah. coming out with, you know, yeah. uh, team stuff, whatever. Mm-hmm. 
I am always interested to sit down and talk. Uh, I yeah. hope you'll come back on on the River Run podcast. Um, yeah. But yeah, man, like um, if I'm God. For the folks who don't know where to find you, because um, we know we can find you at Dubrow Fishing, um, but <laughs> yeah. for your socials and whatnot, you know, let people know where they can find you, man. Yeah, on uh, on Facebook, it's just Brian Schiller um, holding up like a big small mouth in my profile pic. And big then on, uh, on Instagram, it's b.chiller, C-H-I-L-L-E-R yep. underscore. And awesome. uh, I'm there. Um, I don't post as much as I used to, but when I do post, it's usually something juicy. So yeah. All right. Well, it, you heard it, you know where to yeah. find them, you know, yeah. um, dude, thanks a lot for coming on down the river on podcast. No, yeah. uh, I'm Thank really excited. This is, this is the river on podcast. Um, I cast episode, yeah. Yeah. uh, for the paddle and fin lineup. Um, there's, you're be kicking off. This is kicking off the iCast week, so you're kicking oh, us all up. Okay, off I like for it. All the I like podcast it. coming coming out Dude. of iCast, so stay tuned all week because we'll be going live all week long. Yeah, from the show. Don't forget, check out um, at the same time Paddle and Finn. Go check them out on the socials. Uh, Paddle and Finn is on Instagram. Paddle and Finn is on Facebook. Paddle and Finn can be found on YouTube. Check them out. I have all that linked down in the description. At the same time, uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, uh, drop us a comment. You know, let us let us know what's going on. Let us know what you want to hear. Um, Dubro Fishing, check them out, dubrofishing.com. And don't forget, the fine gentleman, du- uh, Brian Shaler, has given the River Run Podcast listeners a 10% off your next Dubro purchase. Use it, guys. That's what it's there for. The promo code, I linked it down in the description. I'll give it to you one last time. And it is uh, Dubro Fishing promo code, and it is all capitals. It is RRUN10. Save 10% at checkout. Uh, So uh, at the end of the day, uh, I will say, uh, yeah, have fun at iCast. Thanks, man. Do you, brother, have fun. And thank you very much for coming on. And yeah, I, and I, was, I was just going to throw out there. We ship to Canada all the time. So don't be afraid. We will get you your stuff if it's shipping up to Canada. Yeah. It's, yeah it's no. And do on a daily basis, <laughs> it comes with, and they, t- it is, it, and they take good care of their packaging. Just, uh, you know, for all you guys out there who are going to be like, well, what does the package look like when it comes? And I'll tell you this, all the packages that have come from Dubro fishing to me, have been in outstanding prestige order taken care of by UPS the U.S. Postal Service, all the way to the Canadian Postal Service. You know, um, at the end of the day, check out Dubro Fishing. If you are going to be at uh, Cask, go down, check them out. Um, let them know the River Run podcast. You heard it on the River Run podcast. Make sure you, you listen to all those guys on the Paddle yeah, and yeah. Finn. And, uh, yeah, so thanks for stopping on by the River Run podcast. I'm your host, Adam Pross. I will see you all soon in the next episode. Take care.